Hi, I'm Susan Schofield reporting live from Fresno County. We're in Woodward Park today reporting live for Advocate TV and the Schofield Truth. In Isaac's case, the problem is that there was a restraining order that was supposedly issued. But where is it? Why don't they have that? Why doesn't anybody have a copy? And it's been, uh, let's see, two months. No one's got a copy of this supposed uh, restraining order that Isaac violated. And guess what? If he didn't violate a restraining order that didn't exist, no crime was committed and he was arrested under false pretenses. And we are going after all of them um, in a civil case because it is a case of false arrest. It is a home run. And the public defender doesn't seem to want to hear any of that. She is encouraging Isaac to actually waive his rights to uh, a fair trial, uh, well, a speedy trial. She is including, she is actually trying to convince Isaac that all he needs to do is waive his rights to a speedy trial because you know what, unless it's a home run, he's not gonna win this. Well, guess what? If she does her job, he is gonna win this and it's not that hard to win this because there was never any evidence. All the evidence is on tape against the perpetrator and the perpetrator is not Isaac. And we have it on tape, the corruption that goes on inside of Fresno County. It's all right there. You judge for yourself. Child endangerment, all there. And the thing is what people have to do is they have to start watching the actual evidence instead of uh, assuming. They hear somebody is in trouble with the law and they automatically assume guilt. So they go to the next level of really, what are rights? I mean, the rights aren't that important, just lock them up. And the problem with that is that everybody is getting quote unquote locked up. The prisons are overcrowded and you kind of wonder why and how many people have been uh, railroaded by the public defenders because it makes more money for the courts if the courts keep the court dates going and they can only do that with people who they waive their rights to due process and like me in children's court do not get a fair trial. Okay, everybody, everybody is getting paid for the court date. So it is beneficial for your court appointed attorney to tell you to waive your rights to um, a speedy trial because then they can continue with the court dates. They go on and on and on. Now here's something that most people don't know. You can actually end the cycle of this all of this by saying, I do not waive my rights to a speedy trial. I want a jury trial right now. My name is Corey Cabana, and I am the stepfather for Cody Schofield. And I am trying to get anyone's attention, uh, any elected officials' attention, because, you know, we're being ignored. You know, they know we're, they're ignoring us. It's, it's not anything that's uh, new or unusual. Elected officials haven't ignored people throughout, you know, all of history. But we're, we're saying that um, in today's modern world and today's modern times that you should not be allowed to ignore your constituencies. We need to let them know. And the first thing that we need to uh, remind our elected officials is they are public servants. They swear an oath when they first take the job. The very first thing they do is swear an oath to protect and defend the Constitution. When they protect and defend the Constitution, that means they are protecting and defending my rights as a constituent, as a uh, person in this Constitution. I am their constituent and it is that power that I have that they are supposed to be monitoring and paying attention to. And that's the thing, they've grown accustomed to ignoring us and it's time for that to stop. In, in today's world of modern media, instant exposure, we need to call out all elected officials when they are no longer supporting us 
and we need to let them know loudly and clearly that we have our rights and our rights say that we are the boss we the people and what we're saying right now is that our elected officials are not listening the justice system is not working the police enforcement is not working school education is not working corporations and pay and equity and food and prices and wages they are not working okay and as elected officials you have the power to help us and it's all about greed and it's all about control and it's all about power and so we the people have the power and we need to remind those in Congress that they need to listen. Thank you. All right, I just wanted to remind people the first time they go to dependency court, if their children were just taken by DCFS and, and they're going to court for the very first time and the judge is, is saying, do you waive the petition, the reading of the petition? And you will say, no, read the petition because they waive the reading of the petition and then they waive your rights in the very next utterance of breath. They say, waive the reading of the petition, waive your advisement of your rights, and do you enter a plea? And that's how they get you. Do not let them get you. Make them read the entire pe petition and then you object to everything that is wrong. And they're not going to let you. Remember that. They're not going to let you, but you're still going to. Make noise. Nope, that was wrong. Nope, nope, nope. The judge will say, I'm sorry, you have a lawyer. But the lawyer will not object for you. So either you smack the lawyer on the head every time you want them to object, or you do it yourself. Because they are not your friend. Now the problem, though, is that um, the judge will tell you to be quiet. The bailiff, in one of my cases, the bailiff actually came up to me and said, you can't object to the judge, but I did it anyway because I knew it was going to get into the transcript. But, but I'm just saying, they're not going to like it, but you got to do it. Ooh, I got one of these. I like this. Tell me what's going on in America. Hey, Isaac. There's a lot going on. Um, but to start off with, we're over here in Fresno. Uh, we're over here because you had your criminal hearing today allegedly criminal charge um, for violating an order that you never even knew about, even though the officers knew that uh, you said you were never served, you had no idea what it was. But as far as what's going on in America, I mean, I guess we can kind of take it back to the very beginning when we're out there in, what was it, Sacramento? The Attorney General, right? Yeah. Attorney General. And back then, it was just me who was kind of working through the federal courts in my own case, kind of, you know, CPS caused my PTSD, not a lie. Um, so, I mean, from there, we kind of all started connecting. And so since then, we have Sam, who's also in the federal court uh, with his case because social workers also falsely removed his children. Going backwards a little bit, I'm in federal court because social workers falsely removed my children. Um, since then, we also have Morris, whose social workers also falsely removed his children. Also, Susan, whose children have also falsely removed their children. Um, and so, we actually just served them recently. Can you tell me real quick? Yeah. Uh, more about why you're advocating with you and your friends regarding the law and the children. I mean, the thing is, we. The reason why I have to do it, it shouldn't be me, it shouldn't be any of us, it should be the law enforcement who can go and protect us, who we can make those reports to. For example, Isaac, in your case, we went over to Fresno Police Department to make a report about abuse against children. That was their job, not ours. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it comes down to just us because no one's going to help us. Uh, there's attorneys who won't touch these cases. Um, we've tried to go to police officers all up and down California from Los Angeles, Sacramento, Fresno, uh, Woodland. I don't know how many times we had to go and ask and still be rejected so many times without even a, a police report. Listen, well, that's occurring. Your recommendation is, is for people to start advocating for themselves. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're all sharing each other's notes. We're showing what each of us are doing and whether it's working or not. Um, just recently, we got to serve Susan's to the County of Los Angeles. Uh, I think it was about two weeks ago. So they're already due to reply. They can't stay quiet anymore. In the federal district court, they have to respond. I mean, it's not just about the federal cases. You can be in front of a video explaining what you're doing and showing the results. So this way, others can go out and do the same thing because right now, it's just on us.
Well, yeah, a lot of people were asking about you. You know, they wanted to know more about you. What got you into doing this? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I'm from Los Angeles County. Um, what happened is on June 2nd, 2021, I had uh, an incident with police officers that ended up bringing a social worker involved into the case. And... Um, Six days later, the social worker went ahead and filed a protective custody warrant, which is an ex-party hearing, to remove the kids, even though he knew exactly that there was no danger. He said it himself. I had no exigency, exigency meaning an emergency. So my kids have been taken for over a year now over false lies, and I can't go to a police officer to go and do that. Instead, they arrested me, just like they did in your case, Isaac. Um, I mean, you can't even report the stuff because then you get arrested too, so this way these officers could negate a child abuse investigation. Like, that doesn't make sense. What human mind doesn't make sense to? You? So everyone's going through this regarding you. Yeah, I mean, and, that's and why you're doing this. And the thing is, no one's going to listen unless it happens to them. Only once it happens to them, then it's like, oh, yeah, I feel this pain too. I get what you're saying. But if you go to someone outside of who hasn't gone through, it's like, well, just do whatever the social workers are asking you to do. It's okay if they lied. I mean, they probably had a good reason. No. Our children are being abused through this whole process. Like Isaac, your daughter, she had bruises. My son got sent to a mental institution on a suicide hold. He's nine years old. They put him on adult medication for schizophrenics without my consent, without my knowledge. And that started men messing with his his mental health. Where can people get help by reaching out to you and finding you? Where can they find you at? I mean, I feel like the biggest thing right now, what I've been recommending from the be the beginning is to go to our Facebook group, The War on Children, because on there, we're sharing what we're doing. We're posting all of our different federal suits. We're posting all these videos. And I mean, we're not experienced. We don't ha we're not lawyers. We were never supposed to do this, but it's just up to us. So we're just trying and sharing what happened. So for right now, I'd say that's the best thing. Um, there's also Isaac um, reaching out to you. Also, Susan, Corey, Sam, Morris. I mean, we're all connected together. There's still more of us who are still coming in because it's up to us there's Dan um, so there's there's more there's a lot of us Start speaking up for children. yeah I mean that's how it happens because right now it's just us but when more of us start speaking up people are gonna listen right now we're just kind of well my kids are getting hurt and I can't do anything no do something make the influence yourself or try do something I mean it's better than nothing and allowing it to happen if I had a belief that my children would just get returned back to me without any damages there would have been no issues cool that's a different story but it's not that it's about the fact that no one's correcting the false allegations no one will do an investigation into it and it's up to us thank you thank you hey so um just real quick uh, my name's Marissa I'm over here with everyone over here in Fresno uh, Isaac hey didn't you get some kind of ceased and assist something about Dan's case? Like, don't talk about this anymore? Like, this has to be quiet? Yes. Excuse me, not his attorney. But the other attorney for the mother, she got her attorney to send me an email telling me that the videos I made for Dan's children were unlawful and for me to take them down. Isn't that a First Amendment violation? Because we're journalizing what's going on. Oh, um, Dan, do you want to go and tell me what's going on? So, um, the court hearing before, I, I wanted to end up explain. We came on in and, and the, the um, minor's counsel uh, said, Hey, we're going to go ahead and agree to in a, let the kids be interviewed by the judge after uh, over a year has gone by. And it was awfully odd that that end up occurred. Well, a few days later, we have an ex parte order to cease and desist. This is horrible because the kids were interviewed by this person of Advocate TV. And oh, this uh, you would take these people to a, a television place to have them interviewed? This, oh, this is horrible. Then the mother um, and the, the grandmother of uh the mom uh comes on in to his website and stalks him what, what's the mother's name oh um there's the mother's name is jill royer all right what are your children's names oh we have you know marcus and nicholas royer okay i was just curious yes and the uh the grandmother which is her mom is eileen mccall okay and if you what's her what's her role well, her role is is she likes to continue the fire. She likes to sit there and cause havoc, and she's the one that's that's stirring standing. things up. She's stirring things up. She's did it during the marriage. She did it through everything else, and so now um, 
we get this letter. He gets this letter from uh, uh, Jill's attorney, uh, Miss Grievous, and she sits there. And and uh, funny thing, she it's a nonprofit organization. All of a sudden, all right, that she's in up entitled to, and she's explaining that it's illegal for him to in up post uh, these in up videos because. Uh, I don't have custody of my kids. But were you ever even notified about an ex-party hearing to take the custody of your children before that happened? They sent me uh, an email like the day before to appear in this ex parte. Did they say the reason behind it or they just said to appear? Well, we have to stop this. Oh, and are you offended by this hat? Come and take, what's wrong with it? Okay. Um, let me explain. There's history in this hat, but this star and this this uh, uh, weapon, and come take it. If you trade this with a cannon, and you look it on up, it basically uh, is history of the United States. Also, if you look on the bill of it, you'll see this little snake that's curled on up, and at the brim it says "Do not tread." That is one of the first American flags that we have had. So this is a historical uh, hat. It's a Second Amendment hat. So what's the issue with the hat? Oh, well, the issue, <laughs> the issue was the other side ended up said, those videos, we said, come for action. Come to the courthouse because we're having a protest on, on July 7th to come on out, be part of it. This, we have to stop this kind of stuff. All right, the other side plays this little game of- The oh, mother, correct? The mother, the the lawyer, and her sidekick that she has now said, oh, I watched those videos and they were horrifying at the fact that, oh, come, come to action. Like, bring your weapons to come down here. This, was this the terrifying weapon? These things over here that everyone's been going to this protest about was- Wow, yeah. Were these the things that everyone was so fearful about that we're speaking about children who are being abused by others who would manipulate the judicial systems to their own advantage? Is, is that what was so scary that we're talking and exposing what's happening with these children? I'm just curious. They don't they don't want to talk about this. They don't. This is this is horrifying. I mean, these are people's kids that are dying. Dead. Dead. They're gone. Dead. I mean, they're gone. They're in the hands of God right now. But in all honesty, these people, you know, I, I, I agree. We want justice. This has to end up, stop. This has got to end up, I, I can't believe this. I heard this story and, and it just, it should bring tear to everybody's eye. What was the whole point about saying that you were calling and raising What's the word that was used? <laughs> Calling to action. Calling to action. So what were they trying to gain out of stating that you're calling to action? Like, like with anything that they do, all they have is narrative. Okay. Um, Isn't that hearsay? It, it, absolutely. It's hearsay, speculation, uh, presumption. Uh, that's not evidence. And that's their evidence. They can portray that. What were they trying to gain out of filing the order? They want to try to get a hold on me. Okay. And what was the result of them stating those things? Oh, well, I'm glad that you asked that. Uh, what they did is they, they sealed the record. They want to make it difficult for me to be able to get it. So I have to go down to the courthouse if I need to you know, get some documents or, or anything that way. They'll seal it on up because they know with a lot of other things that I've been up signed and, and, and filed with them that my due process was violated, no evidence. So now, just like everyone else in social worker cases, you are in a courthouse with concealed records. Is that correct? I am one of the few, uh, or many, actually, I should say. Uh, yes, I, I do. So, I mean, since all this has happened, when was the first court hearing that you received a notice about? Uh, the first thing that started this whole ball of wax was back on May uh, 18, 2021. What happened? What, what happened then? Oh my goodness. This one was based off the, the health and safety of the children are at risk because my kids um, wanted to stand on their constitutional right. Uh, they didn't want to wear a mask. They didn't want to get tested. Um, they didn't want to get vaccinated. They basically stood on um, 
on their constitutional right to choose. So you just supported your children in their choice, is that correct? That's correct. I've also ended up supporting my kids by giving them the education of going to end up seminars with me to sit there and learn about these things. Now, speaking of education, aren't your children now losing their educational, just general school, being able to go into summer school programs and everything else that you were helping them with? Yes. So here, 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 COVID basically did a damage to all of our kids. Uh, the first year, it was mandatory that they would do distant learning. Okay, so now the court and it comes in, we're in the second year, and so now, okay, we need to bring everybody back because of, of uh, government funding to all these NF schools that you got to get them back, and we got to get them all back in mass and get them all tested on this NF test that doesn't end up work and it's not end up approved by FDA. We got to get them all back on in, and if you don't comply with that, then what they end up saying, well, I'll send your kid on home. Well, there's end up an option there. They can do distant learning again. But when you look at the distant learning, what occurs is that they they set them up. The the schooling that they do is much harder than the actual end up grade. So my kids were having a struggle doing the distant learning, and they said, "Well, if they come back in person, it'll be easier. We can we can get them in other programs." They give this false sense of coming back and doing the stuff. My kids are not going to do that, and yet they're going to punish then the father for supporting the kids in their decision. Yeah, I know my children are having a hard time um, through the distant learning. They weren't able to understand. It was a whole new experience for all the kids. Mm -hmm. um, I know you have a younger son. How old is he? I, I have Nicholas, he's 13, and Marcus is, is 16. Now, with Marcus, he has an IEP. So there's certain end of things, uh, because of his uh, differences, made it more difficult. Made it more difficult, and they, they had to, it's a contract. Okay, so the mother, after end up pulling him out of the position because they weren't going to do it, they said, well, because of attendance. You know, to date, I got to end up add this. I still haven't seen from the opposing attorney the decline uh, of why they were kicked out of Woodland Joint Unified School District. And I've asked for it not once, not twice, but five times. Wasn't that while well under uh, the mother's care that they were kicked out? It was underneath the mother's care, and after they allegedly supported this ex parte of uh, granting the mother a temporary order of legal and physical custody, and they still, to date, have not in it showed any evidence, no uh, due process of it. So, so what's the status on the case? I mean, I'm just wondering, so the children were taken from your custody on an ex parte hearing. Mm -hmm. so. What's the process where you're able to even have them back home with you? Or what was the original arrangement before the, this case started? It, it was 50-50. One week on, one week off. One week on, one week off. Uh, I have never tried to take the kids from the mother. Um, the kids enjoy their time with dad and they enjoy, they say, they made comments that, you know, it seems like it goes by really fast to dads, but over at mom's, we're just lingering for the day that you get to come back to dad's. You know, they, they love their dad. The problem, uh, mom doesn't like that. Mom basically is used the court system and it, so far has been getting away with it. So um, I just want to talk about a little bit on what's going on with our cases. So we okay. have federal cases going on because we have social workers kind of do the same thing. It's not family oh. court, but we have social workers who filed ex party hearings saying that the children are being abused. Um, even though the statements contradict themselves, they're doing it themselves. Yeah. And so we have civil cases going on. Uh -huh. I mean, they're government agencies, but I mean, for you, I mean, it sounds like you have claims for perjury, child abduction. I know I was telling you a little bit about um, coercive control, a new bill bought on by California from domestic violence, where it talks about a parent who makes false allegations mm -hmm. to go ahead and remove children without a reasonable basis just to harm the other person. And that's a showing on itself that it's a detriment to the children. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, those are the documents I'm gonna go and kind of send over for you because I think this needs to go into civil case for you, maybe non-federal case because it's not, it's not um, against a state official, but I believe the mother of the children, she, it would be ex almost exactly like our case. Yeah. The four of them we've already written, you know? Yeah, well, the, the problem that I end up have is this judge seems to um, be part of the script. 
he's he's just going along with everything uh you know he, he constantly end up as uh, your thoughts miss grievous uh, the other opposing side and it seems like he's just end up doing it so i i don't know whether he's a puppet to be honest he's just well from my findings based on what i'm seeing in california ex-party hearings are supposed to be an emergency basis because if you do it without it it just raises the standard on what the judge is supposed to rule on and more weight towards the the initial opening party which is why california made that bill on course of control because parents are doing it all the time yeah and they can get away with it i would know it happened to me in 2013 mm -hmm. and same thing happened i had supervised visits over statements that never even happened and i ended up having to go back with my abusive spouse as my only reasonable option and that led to my kids getting removed by social workers themselves so yeah. it was i had no no really um protection behind that but california specifically made a bill ab something like i'll find it out for you exactly okay. Okay. but it came out september 2020 goes off of course of control which is a parent abusing the alternative parent because the children are the only way to go ahead and hurt them yes and that's a direct showing of detriment to the children absolutely how do you feel about that Oh, you know, if you can help me in about that way, I'd greatly appreciate it. The, the kids, you know, the mother just does not like the relationship I have with my kids. My kids, if you could see by the videos, you could see by the way uh, they talk and everything. Else. I remember. I met you guys over there in, in YOLO and I saw how everything was. We're like, oh, how cute. It's like the perfect little American family. It's so cute. Like everything, yeah. like the, the boys were speaking for themselves exactly. and they didn't know. You guys didn't know we were going to be there. That's where I saw her the first time. Yeah. And they already had a whole lot to say. They couldn't have been coached on that they didn't know that we were going to be there to. it was just a natural response and how they felt about the situation they, i think we have multiple witnesses to show that they 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 uh they can speak clearly for themselves all right uh there and and like i said the other sides are doing this narrative accusations all this kind of stuff that way and in all honesty you at the end game they don't even realize that they've lost and you know i don't doubt that your children are very um intelligent to be able to speak with themselves. I know you said that you, you're very much on tech with your kids. Me too, I'm a software engineer. So my kids have grown up with that. So my nine-year-old, he was already able to speak up about what was going on. So it's not questionable for a 13-year-old under that same environment to have his own strong opinion. Yeah. That's my that's my thoughts and my own experience. And it shows in my reports that could be cross-referenced to your case. I, um, I, I've i got background when it comes to statistical process improvement. Uh, I, I've done Microsoft certification as a system engineer and also in a novel, which nobody hears of. But I've done a lot of inner things that way, computer-wise. And, and my kids, they're, they're high tech. I mean, I got them on you know, iPads. I noticed within a Marcus's differences that his visual perception of things and stuff, he can retain really well. And that's how you input the data in him. If, if the audio, he's got a cognitive audio processing delay. So for him, it's jumbled on up. But, I mean, it sounds like you're just very aware of your children. I know, and, exactly. And you use that to go ahead and make sure they can care to them to the best of your abilities. So, I mean, I don't see where there's, what's the most, what's the worst thing that's against you that you had unsupervised visits after you allowed your children not to get vaccinated and not go to school with masks because they didn't feel, I, my kids aren't getting vaccinated. We, those are still new, new medicine. There's still a no risk to masks over children. Absolutely, and here's the thing. So we have no science. So how many times have you heard this in a pitch? There's a trust the science, trust the science. I'm sorry. See, uh, uh, the CDC you know, says, oh, these are uh, benefit from this. How? There's no clinical in our trials that has basically there's no data in there to show that. Well, I, go ahead. I see data. I see people who are getting vaccinated and still have COVID. I'm seeing data. Well, that that's really in a, uh, apparent, but you also end up if you go to the VAR system, which it only end up shows about one percent that's actually being reported. There's over in a twenty-seven thousand in a people that have been passed away after taking the shot. I know personally quite a few different people, and and then you end up have these people coming back saying, "Oh, well, that's a rare uh, re allergic uh, reaction." Well, some of the reaction to end up these shots is death. I'm sorry. Did anybody inform that? to a person when they end up got that shot? So let me just get this right. Because your children are vaccinated, they didn't want to wear masks, you posed a danger to them. Is that correct? According to the other side. Was there anything else? But see, here's the thing. They said that the health and safety of the children are at risk. 
Look at my kids. They're healthy. I haven't been sick for about 18 years. Okay? We take care of ourselves. We end up eat right. We end up we take vitamins. We take in up the necessary things that does. So we have an immune system. Okay? When you looked at this in a, a thing of COVID, it came out to being 99.89% uh, that people didn't have hospitalization or anything else like that. They recovered from it. They, had, they got an immunity to it. Okay? So why would you take the risk of death over the risk of you know, just catching it and overcoming it. So was there anything else that they're saying that you did wrong? No. To remove the kids? Just that? Basically they did that and once I expressed to them of their religious exemptions and their medical exemptions, they try to discredit those and then they said all of a sudden it was high conflict. Why? Because they didn't want to end up here about the medical and the, the the religious exemptions. This sounds like Susan's case, the one where she was seeking medical treatment based on what she researched on what doctors said. Did any doctors ever give you any problems about them not going to school with masks? Or did he have anyone who said, don't do that? I had a, a doctor um, we went to and he said about the trouble of a breathing with a mask and the, the higher end of carbon dioxide that you would get and also the petri dish that you would end up form from having a mask. These masks were never been designed, even before COVID, never been end up designed to stay on a, end up a child's face for end up eight hours. That in itself is child abuse. Okay, suppressing their oxygen, higher levels of carbon dioxide poisoning and stuff and, and, and this bacteria. So and this required an ex. My, my bad. You're we'll fine. <laughs> so just to clarify, that required an ex party hearing. If that order was not granted that day, your children would be in detrimental danger. What do you know? What, what but kind they of never they never showed that they were um, that they were at risk. What what is the reason that they could not wait on a standard order? Did you physically hit your children? No. Did you neglect your children anyway? Did you kind of never? What is the reasonableness behind these ex party orders that are going on in family courts, juvenile courts, all of those to wrongfully remove children, which is why we need to go and move forward on these civil cases to put a stop to that immediately. What they'd like to do, uh, what the other side does, they want to shove stuff to you really super fast so you can't respond. It's just, I want to try to get this person off balance. And that is exactly why California has already noticed and acknowledged that this is an issue. They gave us those protections under the course of control, um, the new bill that was published September 2020. Yeah. California is recognizing it. They say it for, the so for social workers, they say it for... Let me see. I oh, have it. On September 29th, 2020, California Governor Gavin Newsom signed a bill clarifying that conduct used to establish coercive control constitutes abuse under CA's California's Domestic Violence Prevention Act. This is a welcome recognition of a long established form of abuse that can be rather invisible but no less dangerous to victim survivors. Right on. SB 1141, Domestic there Violence we go. Coercive Control. Passed. SB 1141. Check it out. Excellent. You know, and, and, and it's absolutely right. They're using it. Now, in my case, in the, just this a little over a year, they've done three ex partes. And like I said, even the time that it takes, they, they should end up allow so you can have time enough, at least a day to respond. Oh, they don't give you that because they want to throw you off balance. They want to end up be able to, so you don't respond. If you don't respond to an order, it basically says you're accepting this as an argument and you have to go into court. Here's the thing. They don't have in a court recorders. If you go to the website in Yolo County, they've been upstated that you have to, as being the person, the petitioner or the respondent, you have to request a, a record recorder for a court of record. Wait a minute. Isn't that a violation of your due process? Well, see, that's the thing. California is starting to recognize that, and it's going to take more of us pushing back to go ahead and correct these things because you're right, it is a violation of due process, whether it's by a social worker who's a state official, yeah. whether it's through a, an abusive spouse who wants to go ahead and manipulate the children as a reason to go ahead and cause all this unnecessary damages, I guess you could say. Yeah. Not, not, I guess. You can say emotional damages, everything you could possibly think of under the book. How much has really impacted your children? It's not just about, there's the emotional that's going on, there's their education that's going on. They feel like their rights are being trampled on. Yeah. 
You know, when you, you touched on in education. Now, because my kids don't want to go in person, they have a choice. Okay, we can find in up some some charter schools to be able to teach them. There's other alternatives, and the mother, because she has the substantial amount of time. She's suppressing those kids, not giving them access to log in, not end up being able to access to end up a tutor. So she's basically not printing out the documents that is needed to end up for my kids' education. So, you know, what's funny is that the, the court uses in the best interest of the children as a statement, a blind statement saying, well, this is the reason why we're doing this. But then you end up have a mother over there that's controlling everything controlling my kids don't have access to a phone they don't have access to the internet they don't have access to the password to be able to get logged into it they have to go and humble themselves to their mother to be able to end up access that so they can't they can't access anything and also their iPads and things that they do in a path they're all password protected so we can't send out a message can't send out a cry of help so that in itself is child abuse I would end up say um, especially when it comes to their education, suppressing the fact. My oldest has an IEP. That's a federal, and she signed a federal document saying that uh, going to allow him to have summer school, and yet she's deciding, no, I'm not going to do that because I guess she, she felt that the, um, the tutor overstepped her bounds by talking to me when we already got it clarified back at the end of June that I'm able to talk to any of the you know, the uh, tutors and educators and stuff that's in my kid's case. It's just terrible. It's really a shame. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and let you kind of wrap up on this one. So this way, any closing words that you really want to share about what's going on? I mean, I feel like I wish I could have done more with you in the beginning. It's just yeah. all no. of these cases, there's so much. How many of these cases do we have to have these issues with? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. To kind of sum it on up, all right? My kids love their dad dearly, and they know they have a dad that just doesn't quit. My my youngest kid, Nicholas, always said, I got a dad that just doesn't quit. I saw it. And you know what? He's absolutely right. I'm not going to stop. It would be great to get these people to come on out and be part of this. Because in all honesty, what does it got to take? Your kids to be taken away from? Your kids to be on a poster that says, we want justice, and, and, and know that they, they, they were killed? This is ridiculous. We need to stand up for our kids or we're not going to have kids. They, the court system wants to try to eliminate fathers, eliminate mothers. They, they want to be able to control those kids. And you know what? You're not going to control my kids at all. We've, we've had enough. Parents have had enough. We're fighting back. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have the Constitution and that's a living, breathing document that, that states that nothing, you cannot be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process. And this is what's end up happening right now to so many end up people. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. All right, you have a wonderful day, people. Saying goodbye from Fresno. All right, so I mean, I see the sign that you're holding. I wanna know what you wanna talk about. I'm very curious. I wanna talk about the boys. This, the situation with the boys in the foster home. CPS is not doing their job. They did not uh, uh, check on these boys. They 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 gave up. They corrupted in Kern County too. Um, the CPS took my daughter, and when I got my daughter back, she her whole scalp was burned. These kids can't never come back. You know what I'm saying? So I want to give a shout out to their biological parents. You know, I'm, um, they went to court the other day, and I want them to know that. We all stand here for y'all. We here to support y'all. I'm sorry what happened, but y'all need to come out and, and, and really talk about this because I think that the CPS in Kern County is getting away with too much stuff. We should not be uh, looking to bury these boys. These boys had a life to live, you know what I'm saying? They could have been the president or anything, you know what I'm saying? They could have been the ones that want to fight this corrupt city current the CPS, they could have been the one that gave us all the information what's going on in the inside. Because I've been in the inside, so I know what they probably went through. And and um, I think that the the situation with the biological parents, y'all should be giving them more support. Because these babies is gone, and it don't make no sense. Do you know what, what happened? CPS gave them 
PTSD too. Um, I have a question. So as far as CPS getting involved in this, isn't it not so much the case like um, the ones that are in Los Angeles where the CPS didn't get involved? Isn't didn't this, the children end up in a adoption or a foster home as a result of a wrongful removal? Yes, yes, ma'am. And wh how long ago was that? Do you know? Um, it's been almost two years ago that they was taken. And here it is, not even on the two-year anniversary, before the 16th month, when they all knew that way, way months earlier that these kids had passed away. And, and CPS did not go check on the CPS is all hiding. They're not coming out with the truth of what's really going on, what really happened to these boys. And the, and the adoptive parents, I, I, I hope like hell, excuse my language, I hope like hell they get exactly what they want, what they uh, need in prison because that's what they needed to be headed to. Now, now before um, the boys were put into adoption, didn't the mother uh, of these two boys, didn't she do everything the social workers asked and she wanted them back home? Yes, she did. And I feel like they shouldn't even use, take the kids away from her. First of all, she wasn't there when they got hurt. She was at work. They knew that. So I'm trying to figure out where was, what was the cause of the kids being taken away from her? It, you know why? Because it was all about money from the beginning. They young, they boys, um, it was about money. Specifically, Title um, IV and the Social Security Act where they're collecting the, the welfare funds by falsifying reports. I know that's happened in my case and many other cases that are, that are involved with this. I mean, it shouldn't come to the extreme where, what, what happened with the boys? Right, and, and, and they're not really giving no answer. And I wanna know, where are they? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the the biological the biological parents need answers. And I think the foster parents need to give up the information on where these boys at and and let them be at peace and let these boys be buried in the right way with their parents. And just to clarify, because I know when I saw these boys in the very beginning, when we were over at Susan's protest, I think it was in March as well uh, this year, um, I saw the boys and I remember everyone saying, um, where are the boys? I didn't actually realize that they were declared murdered by the adoptive parents. And that's correct, right? Correct. And also, no some bodies no bodies yet. They don't, they haven't turned, yeah, they got grand jury indictment, but we, that, where's the bodies at to these you know what I'm saying? The parents deserve the, these kids' body back to her. You know what I'm saying? So she could give them a proper burial services. You know, and a lot of people is here to support her. There might be a few little sprinkles out there trying to dis, uh, disqualify her, but being a parent, her, her rights was taken away from her illegally. And I feel like what a lot of people don't understand is unless it's happened to you, it's something that's not believed. Correct. But it shouldn't have to come to murders of children while under CPS control who placed them in this adoptive home. Didn't the mother already report that there was she had concerns over their children as well that went ignored? They yeah, no, every every report she reported on them, everything that she knew about the situation, every suspicions that she had in the beginning when she felt like her kids was gone, they was already gone. And the bad thing about it, the foster parents used, they adopted kids, they helped them murder these kids. What do you know about that? I've actually never heard that part. Yes, that, um, that's an indictment, you know what I'm saying? And so, that right there should let them let people know that they shouldn't have no kids at all and they have the nerve to want to go back and visit the kids. What's your relation to the mother? I know the mother by associate with Roro, you know, mm -hmm. and I met him through there. I started um, walking and fighting to help find the boys because I thought they was kidnapped. So you thought they're still alive when you were helping to look her, or look for the kids with her? Yes. How, and turned out the kids have been dead. How did it feel to actually understand when that moment changed, where they were not missing or kidnapped, to actually know, be a part of the search before it even was declared um, murders over the two boys? How did what did that feel like for you? What was going through your mind? All I could think about is when my kids, two of my kids have been kidnapped, I've been kidnapped, 
But my kidnap tried to kill me. I, all I could imagine what they was going through, what the situation before they was murdered, the fear in their eyes, the fear, you know, of them knowing that this is going to be their last day of breathing. You know, that hurt in my soul because I didn't find my son till three weeks later, and I miscarried a set of twins, and it was just so painful, you know what I'm saying? So I could imagine the pain she was in, the the, the PTSD that the CPS caused, because when they took my child, it, it, I knew for a fact I, I had PTSD, you know? And, every, every, and nowadays, they just taking them for money. So when you said that you remember how it feels like to, to lose your son um, because he went missing, how much support did you get from state officials as far as trying to find him? I didn't get none. At any point? At any point until the last day my own family member said, I see the girl with your son. And the cold part about it, she signed my son out of school without an ID. Well. So I have a question to follow up on this one. So now with the boys, how much support were, were you guys getting while trying to search for them? Were state officials trying to help then from the beginning? They started like they was helping a lot, but then they started slowing down, you know, and maybe they was just breaking on issues, but I think it should have went faster than this because so many people, so even the mother has said that the kids have been missing. Nobody never seen them kids where they where they stayed at. How is California City, you in California City, no neighbors or none of that had seen these two boys. So that means these two boys passed in Bakersfield, not in California City. Now, have you seen these boys on the news at all at any point? Yes, I have as a, a lot since the uh, the indictment came. But only after they're declared murdered, not before that. It wasn't that big of a deal. It actually no. wasn't a deal at all. Yeah, I don't think it. I don't think they thought it was important for them because they really didn't give them the coverage that they needed. It took for them to get out and and, and march and start screaming and like, you know what I'm saying like where's the help at? They really needed the help and nobody wasn't there. So my question I have to California is, why does it take murders of these children under the care of CPS social workers across California to be heard? Why does it take families to come together to protect them? The state officials are supposed to be protecting our children, but they're causing their deaths. A lot of deaths. Uh, multiple, I found out that multiple deaths is happening in CPS care. Just like a two-year-old, they said, that came up, that ran away. How can a two-year-old run away from a foster care? No, come to find out the two-year-old ended up dead. Where was this? This was in Los Angeles. How long ago was that? Um, maybe about six, seven years ago. And, you know, and I'm quite sure it's more than that because there's no way a child in a walker is running away. Well, surprisingly, I've never even heard about that. And I've been researching a lot. So why are these cases being swept under the rug? Why is no one else talking about it? How many more children have to be murdered in order to go ahead and protect our children? Because right now, they're not being protected for their own good. They're being protected for the collection of fraudulent government funding. Yes, there is, and a lot of and a lot of girls, I was being, a lot of girls are being hurt, raped in the system, and they're not looking at none of that. They're not listening to what these kids got to say. Is it, you know what I'm saying? These kids can tell you more what's going on in their household if, if, if the state official listen. We try to tell them wasn't nothing going on in our household, and our parents loved it. Us, you know what they told us? They don't love y'all, and they ain't coming back for y'all. CPS tries to um, make make us lie on our parents. They do all different types of stuff, and, and it, it never stopped it. I was seven years old, I'm 54. So it's been going on. And it's still impacting you in this far in your life? Correct, it's because that's what made me stand, come out and stand up for all these kids and the CPS corruption. They also, they also child trafficking in their system. Did you hear about that? To an extent, yes, but California doesn't want to call it child trafficking. I know that. 
They try, that's another thing they sweeping up on the run. That's why I said, let's break the chain. That's why it was on my shirt. Let's break the chain. We ain't going to keep on going through CPS causing all this PTSD to all these men and women. They fighting for a reason. They want their kids. The CPS needs to be abolished, however you pronounce it. They don't need to be taking nobody's kids because they're not looking after these kids. These kids is dying in the system. These kids is killing themselves. They're really dying. They, you know what I'm saying? They're killing themselves. The most recent. Yes, and this is the most recent. They're killing themselves in the system. Suicide, so big right now on kids killing themselves. And I don't know if you know this or not, but my son, the week after he was taken, he was put into a psychiatric hold for a month on a suicide watch because he automatically wanted to do that. It's the second time that he's gone through this and he already understands the dynamics. He was fearful that his father was gonna find us. He was traumatized by being removed from me. He's only nine years old. They have him on medication for adult schizophrenics. He, was ne he never had mental health problems, ever. No mental health problems. The mental health problems came from being in the system. CPS. CPS caused all this depression, PTSD, suicide, all, the, all this by separation. You separating families, you separating kids, and kids don't understand by being separated from their mother or father. And if kids was going through abuse or any of that, all you had to do is sit down. Kids talk. Uh, kids will tell you in a minute they'd rather be home anytime, any day, whether whatever their parents are going through. They mother, mothers are gonna be protected. But now we got fathers that's fighting and standing up. That's what I like. I like the fact that we all could get together and stand up. But we in the back in the days, the men's one is standing up. This is 2022. And there's a lot of men here standing up for their kids. And we need to uh, appreciate the fact that, 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 that fathers want to be fathers. And separation is not good for kids. CPS, depression. CPS, PTSD. It's so much mental, emotional problem. Um, and then you're taking kids and putting them in psychic hospitals and all because they want their parents. That's all they want. You wouldn't. We wouldn't have all of this situation. Also, we we dealing with homeless. That's why they're going homeless because CPS tear you down. They tear the kids down. They tear the parents down, and they don't care because all they're thinking about is moolah. How they're going to go and scale up their own business operations? Correct. And who and who looking for a child that they can sell? That's child trafficking. That's exactly what they're doing. Because each child that they place, they're paying for them. I want, I want to see every parent get their kids back. I want the CPS to stop taking people's kids. If you help the parents, help them stay with their kids, it can help them better than CPS. CPS gonna destroy us. Well, I mean, if I had to add something about what I'd say, I would say I'm very proud of the family for taking this up with federal court because yeah. now it's not in a court with concealed records. It's now public record. You can't hide that anymore. That is right. there. Right. You can't take it away. It is already there. I saw it. I've read it. Good for you guys for doing that because we need more of those to make more awareness. Correct. That was my best shout out for this family. And yes. I feel so sorry for your loss. Yes. And I, I just hate the fact that they keep putting a, um, the trial off. These kids need justice now. My heart breaks for the kids that's in the system, kids that's dying for no reason, all this shooting, you know, and the CPS talking about they protect the kids. I don't see where they're protecting kids. Kids are dying left and right in their system. And I want to know why they always saying that a parent needs to go to mental class, a mental therapist, or whether that. How do you know they have that? They didn't have it until you gave it to them. First of all, when you separate kids from their parents, you destroying both parts of them. You giving them depression, something that they gonna forever have to deal with. Separation, that's, that's all by itself is a problem. Um, we have enough kids, fathers and mothers being separated. But when you got both parents fighting, we, even when you got one parent fighting, and what's so good is when you see the fathers fighting. But I'm trying to understand, 
because I went through the same thing. How did you know I had a mental problem? How are you going to suggest that every parent have a mental problem and that they need to go to some kind of therapy? Because that's what y'all decided? You know why y'all decided that? Because y'all knew what y'all was doing in the beginning. You was giving us depression. You was giving us PTSD. You was giving us um, suicidal thoughts. Kids leaving and dying in the system. Can you give some examples of how they're giving families the suicidal thoughts, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder? Because they separating us. You know, uh, little kids don't understand. Why do they have to be separated from their parent? You know what I'm saying? And why is y'all not listening to the kids? The kids will tell you they want to be with their parents. They'll tell you which parent is doing the, doing, doing the most and doing, you know, doing what they're supposed to do. Each, I don't think they should be separating kids. I think that we all should be putting the kids with the parents and making, if you feel like they got a problem in mental health or anything, get them some help. Well, separating is not not helping. It's destroying. It's destroying everybody, you know. And that's why a lot of us coming back. And that's why PTSD clothing line here to help every parent because I know what they did. They destroyed me. But they try to say I I was destroyed in the beginning. Y'all destroyed me. 18 months I fight so hard for something that I didn't do for my child. And I think each and every one of us can tell you that we rather. Separated. Why give these kids the depression and the thoughts? Well, if I can't be with my mother and father, why at a young age they're killing themselves? Why? Because they don't understand. Second of all, they destroying us in the system. Kids, we got we we, we just like these boys. They die in the system. Why? Now that parent, these parents suffering. They were suffering when you first took them out the household. Marissa and them suffering, Susan and them suffering, Isaac suffering, Robert suffering. We all suffer, and it don't stop. I think about all the stuff that my daughter went through. Guess what? When my daughter got grown, it led her on drugs. Because you know why? Because she was already destroyed in the system. At two years old, she's going through trauma, and instead of you trying to fix the trauma in her life, you destroyed it and make it worse. So when she got all she knew was drugs, and it's just now taking her to get back to herself at 36. That's where we. That's where the judges, the CPS, all this corruption. If you look at everybody, yeah, it's all abuse. They abusing us, and now that we standing up to fight back. They don't understand that, but we coming stronger and we coming harder, and we won't stop. My name's Robert Goff. Can you tell me a little bit about your story? Yeah, well, um, I've been having an ongoing problem with uh, custody issues with the mother of my kids. And uh, I've been dealing with sheriffs and CPS for quite a few years now. And uh, on May 16th, there was an open 911 call used to rush my house. And they shot my dogs without making any contact with me when they first entered my property. Ordered me outside, took, cuffed me up, took me to jail, took my kids, put them in CPS, all for an open 911 call that I have on video proving that there was no reason to call 911. I also have a Facebook Live of the sheriffs doing what they did, and they still pinned four charges on me, and only the, just strictly so they could take my kids and put them in CPS custody and uh, only two of the charges uh, ended up sticking after I bailed out of jail uh, and they were related to the kids. Yeah, I miss them tremendously. I mean, my, my life revolves around my kids. I've been the, the primary uh, custodial parent uh, since my oldest two were babies. I, I started yelling at them, letting them know that they were being recorded and it got kind of hectic, dogs barking, kids crying, me yelling. And finally, when they asked me to come out, I did. I, di I didn't know what was going on. Uh, they, they shot two of the dogs, that's when I started yelling at them and at the time I couldn't hear them telling me to come outside until they breached my window. And once they breached... Oh, because they told me to come out and talk to them after they pulled the, the uh, breached the bedroom window. Wow, so I mean it's very much like an intimidation tactic to go and get you to... I mean they actually breached your window. 
Yeah, yeah. Without your consent? Well, they they didn't come inside, but they they pulled the the cover off the window and told me to come outside. So. Yeah, that sounds, um, sounds like a, a, some constitutional violations right there. That oh I'm yeah, hearing. definitely. Uh, so, what about CPS? What is it that they're alleging that it happened? So, so CPS, it, they don't care. Because uh, actually my court case for the criminal for what for this incident is tomorrow And there's no charges been filed because they use this strictly to take my kids away so They don't care about the criminal case now because there is And so CPS is is basically fabricated reasons to take the kids um, They're saying that that there is no running water at our at our home up in Albury, which there is there never has not been running water um, Did the officers ever Actually actually um, I had already been talking to the sheriffs and CPS and deputy Tucker Already confirmed with CPS just a couple months before this that there was running water in in the house So and, and then you know the CPS is not talking about them visiting my house a couple months before this happened But it did happen and it's documented and videotaped actually too so. the that water? Running water they're trying to say that my kids were dirty and that they hadn't had a change in clothes in how many in who knows how many days which is all false the day I have video from the uh, from the very day before this occurred, I have video from the Mono Win Casino powwow where the kids were playing, and they were we had, they had had showers and fresh clothes put on that day. They 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 were basically just grasping at straws and finding reasons to start a case, and and they totally fabricated this. How did, how did those stand up in court? Did you go to court? Did, was that decided that, that that was untrue? You said that. Yeah, they're they're dragging it out. Actually, the first hearing was in 72 hours, and it was kind of weird because we couldn't say anything, and uh, um, they just decide the judge decided that there was enough evidence to start a child dependency case, and uh, so I've been doing everything they asked me to do. I haven't been giving them no conflict or or, or contesting fine. anything. Do I've been doing you. everything that they want me to do and it seems like now they're dragging it out so, so that kind of worries better. me you don't see them you know giving oh. you more challenges. um they're 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 telling us that we're it, we're in family reunification but they're definitely dragging it out and they're using fraud trying to have us do classes and stuff that have absolutely nothing to do with any of the accusations even let alone the case um Right now, they they got me doing. I'm I'm in a substance abuse class because there is no substance, substance abuse. They, they've already admitted to, to me that I don't have a substance abuse problem, but I'm being forced to do this. And you're even doing those now, right? Yeah, I'm doing that. I'm drug testing everything. Um, there, the, I went to a mental health evaluation. The lady there twisted everything. And then when I sat down to go over my treatment plan, I specifically asked her what it was based on, and she told me a couple basic answers and deliberately did not go over the details of it with me because I asked her, then had me sign a little digital signature pad across the room, and then printed it and gave it to me after what I signed I it. Do you know what you signed? Uh, I didn't at the time, and I and I definitely should not have signed that without reading it. I, I signed, she, she list, uh, listed all these things that did not apply to me or my life and said a uh, pro probable deterioration, and that's the, uh, the medical need. And they want me to do mental health uh, meetings for a year. <laughs> and, and this was supposedly based off a little bit of depression and signs of anxiety from what happened with the kids. So at which which was which which was care. like at its worst when it first happened which is when they evaluated me now I'm focused and doing everything I got to do but they're still trying to hold that over my head and oh you're gonna need mental health count and and now they're they want me to do domestic violence and child abuse classes when none of that played a role in what happened or even what they're accusing me of it's insane it's it's a racket they, it's job security for these people they're using fraud and, and uh, deliberately dragging the process out so that they can and, make and more I'm money. Sorry for your loss, but your dogs died because of that. No, actually, they shot my dogs with bean bags. So I apologize for not no, clarifying that. So but but uh, but yeah, they didn't die. Um, they were injured. Right. <laughs> so I mean, I kind of want to draw this back to the case plan um, that you're going over as far as them dragging it out. I know Vanessa. I don't know if you know who she is or not. She's over there in Woodland County. With her, she already completed her her classes. And right after it, before the next 
we're hearing they gave her more classes to go to continue the services. That happened with me as well in 2014 in San Bernardino County. So that's why... That's what I'm worried time. about. They can't. Yeah. And they will. They've done it. And so in this case, in Los Angeles County, from the very beginning, I said, no, I'm not going to do any of these classes and services until you tell me the reasonable basis for it. There is no domestic violence. Uh, I have a restraining order against my kid's dad. He didn't even know where we live. So what's the reasonable basis for domestic violence? Therapy. What is it that I'm supposed to overcome? What is wrong? Can you explain yeah. and clarify to me? What's the quantity? What's the objective? Give me all this information. And I pretty much dragged my feet on up until this last hearing where my attorney put it set in stone. As soon as those are done, the kids are coming home. So for those reasons, like, cool. We got that clarified. 12 DV classes. Therapists say if it's four or not. I went to four of them. And the uh, for an extended intake process. And the therapist, she kept saying that, um, that I have nothing to treat. That's what I said. But I was willing to be compliant. Um, the drug screenings, I have it limited to only five. Only five, and that's it. And then also to the parenting, I'm already pretty much done with that. And then that's it. So I think it's really important that we all start collectively saying, am I meeting these objectives? And when, even emailing the social works, is there anything else? Can you go and explain those things? Um, and I feel like a lot of people don't really know that until they actually go through the process and then you see it happen because you can feel it. Yeah. Uh, so that, those are my two thoughts on there. Isaac, did you have anything that you wanted to touch on? How long ago did this happen? This happened on May 16th, so just over two months ago. Welcome. It's Advocate Television, Crimes Against Children. And today, we're here with people and we're talking about children. We're talking about child abuse. We're talking about the rights of those children that are abused. And we're talking about parents that are being abused through the court system. One of the major questions is, why is this happening so much? We're finally coming to notice today in society that abuse is everywhere. It's not in one court, it's not in two courts, it's in almost every court. And we have friends and family members, people are very concerned. They're very concerned. Uh, you know, I've got my friend Marissa and, and Robert, Tina, Sam, Susan Schofield. A lot of people showed up today to represent children. And I'd like to say thank you to those people and to continue fighting for children. Today, I want to talk about a very special boy. And his name is Thaddeus. And uh, Thaddeus Saran was murdered by his own mother and father. And this was in Madera County, not too far from Fresno, where we're at right now. This was, I believe, it says here 2020, July 29th. That's when the crime was updated. Uh, so it had to have been around that time. This boy, he was found burnt in an almond field. Wow. His, he was burnt, he was dead, he was murdered. He was two years old and he couldn't walk and I believe he had a colostomy bag. So he was disabled and he couldn't talk and he was murdered by his own mother and father. And the almond field that they found his burnt body in uh, belonged to the family. And they are the number one organic almond supplier of the world. Uh, recently, I had also found out that the family had gave some land to that county. You know, if that's not a conflict of interest, I don't know what is. But a child died, and the family who murdered the child is giving acres to the same county who's prosecuting the crime. Now, before he died, his sister died. And, and that murder was not charged until after he died. And so now the DA went backwards a few years and is prosecuting the mother for killing her first child, which was a girl. And they claimed it was still birth and it was not. So now we know that CPS is so negligent that they have to go backwards to pick up murder cases. You know, that is disgusting. What do you think about that? Well, there was no awareness. Nobody knew he was being abused. Exactly. If CPS knew that one child already died, regardless how it happened, 
Uh, why would they fail to protect the second child? I mean, they're quick to go ahead and falsify reports of parents to remove children who are not in danger. Why not go to protect wow. the ones that are in danger? Right. So one child was murdered. Why wouldn't they remove the second child? You know, that, that's a, but you know, you said that there's also a conflict of interest in there, right? County was involved with getting... Well, well, yeah. If the family of the murderers are rich, rich enough to give acres to the same county that's prosecuting a murder, I mean, that's mind-blowing. The case should have been heard in another county. You know? So what's, wrong? what's going on with the parents now? Well, just recently, you know, this is why I wanted to talk about this. Just recently, the case is over. The case is over and the DA, well see this is very interesting, the DA went on Facebook, her name is Sally Moreno of Madera, California, District Attorney. She went on a Facebook live for maybe 10 or 20 seconds and she said that they prosecuted the mother and the father to, to the fullest extent of the law or what have you not and that was it. She didn't say how much time they got, she didn't say if they're serving life or if they're getting the death sentence. And, and you see how quick they were to say something and then that was it. The trial, oh, well, I'm not exactly sure because the media stopped reporting on the murder. The media was not warning the public. The public was not engaged with this murder case. And uh, we need to take it upon ourselves. This case is bigger than the Gabriel Fernandez case. How many other ones are being covered up? And and nobody's even the media isn't covering this. You know this this is big time. You know, here here's another big time case right here. You know this is right. This is this is my child. You know this is my child. Her name's Kasi, and uh, right here in this picture, she has a broken face, and there's a handprint on her face, and it's covered in makeup. Correct. Basically, what's going on here is just like a lot of cases, you know, when children die, first they have to be abused. And in order for them to die, a lot of times the abuse occurs for a long period of time. Now, when that occurs, that's the only way a child can be killed is you have to deprive a child of their rights. And that's what's going on with this child. This child has been depriven of her rights so bad that her face has been broke. And the conflict with that is usually when a perpetrator leaves their handprint on the face of a child, usually the news puts that on TV and it's national. You know, but this is different because the perpetrators, you know, her grandfather where she lives at, the grandfather is friends with the district attorney. The district attorney is Lisa Smithcamp, and the grandfather's name is Randy Clifton. And there's a lot of conflicts involving this case. Uh, for one, Randy Clifton is in the fraternal order with the police. You know, he's in the church with the lot with the uh, with the DA. You know, he's a lodge member. And uh, you know, you can practice any religion you want, but when we find out there's crimes coming out of that church pertaining to children. We've got a real social issue, and I think that's where a lot of these crimes regarding the children, I think that's where they're coming from. A lot of these, uh, these evil people are judges, lawyers, cops, DAs, prosecutors, CPS. You know, these people, they're not acting moral. 
They're not acting ethical. They're acting evil. And we have to call it like we see it. Well, you know, right afterwards, I mean, since we weren't able to make a police report that day, since they wanted to arrest you instead of actually letting us even accomplish what we were there to begin with to go to do, uh, me and Susan, we filed um, a report with uh, CPS as well to go ahead and explain that Cassie's being abused. And without an explanation, it was just, no, we already received a referral from the police department and there's no, there's, um, there's nothing that's necessary for us to continue an investigation on. From right afterwards, I mean, I don't see why without allowing an opportunity to go and conduct an interview when we're saying that a child is being abused. So, I mean, do we have to have more deaths before someone wants right. to talk about it? What's going on, in my opinion, is... You know, when, when something bad in society happens, what do we do? We have to call the cops, you know, or if it's a child, we have to call CPS. You know, if there's a fire, we call the fire department. You know, if, if they can't help us, or if we know they're not helping, we need to start taking it upon ourselves, And we need to start investigating. If we have to start learning law, if we have to start advocating for children, you know, whatever it is we have to do. Um, regarding this child, you know, this is a case of a lot of evil people. A lot of evil people are abusing her, they're making money off of it, and it needs to be exposed. You know, this is the mom, Raquel Clifton, and this is the stepdad, Armando Gonzalez. When they broke Cassie's face, the mother had a baby in her stomach. You know, so see... Yeah, she tested positive for meth the very first time I drug tested her in court. And they didn't lock her up. They didn't press charges. The custody away from you or yeah. When, when, when we were together, I was with her for 10 years. I found out she was using drugs. I decided to leave her. I told CPS the mother was using drugs. CPS told me to leave and to take the baby. So that's what I did. I got the baby and I left. CPS and the cops came to my house and they advised me nobody had custody so for me to go file custody so on the petition I go and I saw I file custody tell the judge that you know the mom's a drug addict and uh, you know what have you not and next thing you know the cops come to my house with a whole bunch of cop cars taking my baby away claiming that the mom went to court and got an emergency restraining order claiming that I hit her or I was abusive on ex parte uh, which is you know all hearsay, no evidence. If it was true, where's the arrest? Why am I not locked up? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. Her grandfather, I mean, her dad, Randy Clifton, you know, her dad, Randy Clifton, he's friends with the DA, and, uh, and his brothers have a band called the MoFo Party Band. This band, they give charity money to the judges in the county. Fresno County? In Fresno County, so potentially, well, yes, where my case is, that's so, so potentially any time I go in front of a judge, his brothers have already put money in the pockets of those judges. And that's a major conflict of interest. Wow. Also, another thing, Randy Clifton, her father's friend, is the lawyer who takes cases from the DA. So Randy Clifton's friend takes cases from the DA. So literally, Randy just calls up his friend, and he calls up the DA, you know, and, uh... So, I mean, you had a... When, when you took your daughter, your, uh, the mother was doing drugs. Now, did they find anything about you doing any kind of drugs? They never found anything, because there never was anything. Well, you had a lot of videos about her being physically abused, though, right? Like, the face... Yeah, CPS, they do not take evidence. You know, and if they did, kids wouldn't be abused. Yeah, well, in my opinion, it's about money. A lot of these kids are worth more dead than alive. You know, when these kids die, they're, they're, they're making movies, and then there's Netflix, and you know, the prosecutor wants to be on the camera, he wants to be a superhero for doing his job prosecuting. 
you know anybody can prosecute a murder you know um, it's money there's a lot of money there's a lot of politics and we need to take the politics out of this and bring love into it you know when we love children it shows and when we don't protect children it also shows yes basically uh, we were doing a protest we were making a report cops told us to go to the victim's house to take the report and when we got there I was assaulted and these are the pictures of the assault you know there was a lot of kids that saw the assault uh, cops did not investigate they did not make an arrest Yeah, to, to my knowledge, I mean, uh, the cops are looking at the, the film all the time. You know, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure the cops know who I am and, and what the story is. Um, I've been in court a lot of times, spent about 30 grand, had an army of attorneys. None of them protected my rights. And now that I'm by myself, you know, um, it's a lot better. I've been able to finally get my voice heard and tell my daughter's story and let the community also back me up, you know? Because we need community to come out here and support children. How far are you willing to take this case? Well, this is my daughter. This is the only child I have. Uh, she bears my name. You know, her name is my name spelled backwards. She was born on Valentine's Day. She's a very special child and uh, if she wasn't abused, I would have never had the opportunity to help other kids. So I think God has put me in this position. And you know, I can't say for sure what's gonna happen, but I do believe that we will get justice for Kasi. I do believe that. And we will not stop. We will not stop.